Welcome to WMNF 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. You're listening to the Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan. The United Way Suncoast has released a new online dashboard called State of the Housing Crisis. We're going to talk today about that dashboard, what information is there, how you can use it to get help, and why housing seems so unaffordable, especially here in the Tampa Bay area. My guest joining me by Zoom this morning is Doug Griesenauer, the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. Welcome back to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Doug. Great to be here. I'm glad you could join us. So an, um, a new housing crisis study by your organization reveals that one in two families in Hillsborough, Pinellas, Manatee, Sarasota, and DeSoto counties are rent cost burdened. So what does that term mean? Sure. So if you are rent cost burdened, it means that you're spending more than 30% of your income on housing. Uh, so when looking at studies about how much people should be spending on their housing, economists say that an individual should be in theory spending less than 30% of their total income. If they're spending more, it means that their housing tends to be outpacing their budgets and it makes it difficult for them to manage their budget on other ways. And so typically when we look at an individual's um, livelihood and their financial stability, in theory, you should be 30% or less of your income on rent. If it's more, you're housing cost burdened. And if it's more than 50%, you're severely housing cost burdened. And obviously, the the, the more rent cost uh, burdened you, you are, the, the more you won't be able to uh, afford other essentials like maybe medicine or health care or education or, uh, or uh, child care, things like that. What, what makes it so important to... To, to get underneath this 30% threshold for rent. Sure, and so a lot of times when we're talking about how we address housing, we're really looking at how, does we, how do we make housing affordable and how does it work? But with individuals who are struggling, a dollar is a dollar is a dollar, right? I mean, a dollar that you spend on housing is a dollar that you're not spending on your medicine, that you're not spending on food or transportation. And so when we at United Way are looking at how much it actually costs to get by, we use something that's called an Alice Report. Um, it's a report that came out a few years back that stands for individuals, so A-L-I-C-E, it's an acronym. I like to say that it's a fairly silly acronym that describes a very serious topic, um, but individuals who are asset limited, income constrained, but employed, right? So they're working, they're working hard, they're above the federal poverty level, but they're income constrained. Their income is going right back into paying bills, going right back into paying for basic necessities. And so because of that, they're asset limited. And we know that assets tend to be the way to build wealth in our country, and a lot of individuals don't have those opportunities. And so when we look at how much it costs to get by, you know, we have rep, uh, data from before the pandemic. So this is before the entire housing crisis happened, before rents have skyrocketed. You know, looking at the costs of individuals in our household, we knew that it took, cost about $76,000 for a family of four to get by. And so if you're spending more and more on rent, that means you have to spend less and less on, on basic necessities. And we see that day in and day out from individuals in our community. People foregoing uh, five, you know, three meals a day, people who are foregoing their medicine, uh, trying to stretch out their prescriptions, and you know, a lot of individuals who are trying to look for childcare and instead of being able to go and put their kids you know, in childcare, they're hoping that they can find something in home that may or may not be registered, right? Anytime that someone is struggling with housing, they're struggling with all those other things as well, because income is income and expenses are expenses. Our guest is Doug Griesenauer, the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. We're talking about their new online dashboard about the housing crisis and how housing seems so unaffordable and what you can do to get help. Um, that statistic that we were talking about where one in two families in the Tampa Bay area are rent cost burden, that's just one of the indicators that the United Way Suncoast is tracking in its state of the housing crisis dashboard. Some of the others are uh, rental rates, eviction filings, emergency re uh, rental assistant dollars. So for example, what can you tell us about the, the um, a number of evictions in the Tampa Bay area? Yeah, so when we're looking at this information, and while we, the reason we built out this, uh, this dashboard is we found that when we were addressing and talking to individuals about housings, you would have a story here about apartment rents going up. You would have a story there about evictions happening. You'd have a story somewhere else about workforce. And they've all tended to be independent stories about what's going on. And so when we looked at this, we tried to see, well, how do we tell those stories together? 
right? Because an individual's lives and livelihoods are all connected. So to answer your question, looking at evictions, what we've noticed is that evictions have, for the most part, returned to pre-pandemic levels. Um, and honestly, they've returned to pre-pandemic levels months ago. Um, you know, Florida had a moratorium for evictions, but that was a very small window in 2020. And actually for a majority of the late 2021 and now easily into 2022, we see that those uh, evictions have gone up. Um, we actually look at some of our recent data. So the data that we pull from our uh, report here is actually from the Schimberg Center at University of Florida, which does great work looking at evictions. Um, we cross collaborate with um, a group known as Eviction Lab to also get some data. And looking at both of those different um, data points, we see that evictions are really back to where they were uh, pre-pandemic. And in some weeks, they're, they're higher. Yeah, on your dashboard, there's a, a graph that you can look at where you can see where evictions flattened out to near zero during the first few months of the pandemic. And that was mainly because, you know, there was there were legal protections against eviction during that time. And then but they have been rising, as you've been saying, what trends starting in about the fall of 2020, we saw that trend. And why do you think that that happened after that, that near zero of evictions? I mean, it was near zero in the in the summer of, of of 2020 because it had to be. <laughs> there was the federal moratorium that was preventing evictions from taking place. And again, you know, history is here important because when we talked about the eviction moratorium from 2020, it seems like forever ago. Two years could feel like, you know, two decades these days. Um, but that moratorium was preventing evictions themselves, not eviction filings. And so a lot of individuals were filing for eviction here in Florida. Um, and we're getting, you know, the, the thing we say is they get up right up to the five yard line and then the moratorium came, took in place to get them away from that. And when the, the moratorium disappeared, all of those at the five yard line got pushed to the end zone. Um, and so that's where there was the big jump on, on those evictions. You know, we noticed that that was a bit of a peak and now things are, are for the most part back to where they are. What's really fascinating is that we've been tracking evictions and we see that it's, it's back to where it was pre-pandemic. But what's more fascinating when we talk to our nonprofits and community groups is the number of people that are simply getting pushed out of their homes, not because they're evicted, but because they're priced out. And so again, that's the point of why we're looking at this dish dashboard is evictions can tell you one story, right? And looking at eviction filings, usually you know, every month is getting you know, a few hundred to a thousand eviction filings in Hillsborough County. And that's a lot of people and that is a problem, but the number of people who are simply being priced out of their homes is order of magnitude higher. And so we want to tell that whole story of housing where there's individuals that, again, they get a note from their landlord that says, hey, next month, right, you know, when we renew your lease, rents up 800 bucks. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I could not afford an $800 a month increase. And most people can't. And so you're not evicted. It's not on your record, but you're on the street. Yeah, it has the same effect, and I, I sure couldn't afford that as well. We're speaking with Doug Greisen, uh, sorry, Doug Griesenauer, the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast on Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. It's 1014 in the morning. Later on in the show, we will take your phone calls if you have any questions about uh, rental affordability or how you can get help on rent assistance or eviction assistance and so forth. And if you just want to let us know what the situation is for you out there in the Tampa Bay area, uh, you can call in 813-239-9663. I'll also take emails, dj at wmnf.org. You can text us at 813-433-0885. Please let us know your name and what town you're calling from. So, Doug, I want to going back to something that you were just talking about, about uh, not getting necessarily evicted, but having your rent go out of control so that you just can't even afford it. There was a U.S. Census Household Pulse Survey that came out that indicated that 40% of Florida respondents feel they're likely to be evicted from their home in the next two months. I mean, that's insane. 40% of us um, might face eviction just because we're either we're priced out or we're so far behind in our rents. And on the United Way Suncoast dashboard, there's information about legal help that might be available for renters, for people who are renting, who've been served an eviction notice by their landlord. So what would you recommend for people who have been served an eviction notice? Yes. So individuals who've been served an eviction notice, we'd encourage you to reach out to legal aid immediately. Um, so we are working with three different legal aid groups, Bay Area Legal in Hillsborough County, uh, Gulf Coast Legal in Sarasota, Manatee, and DeSoto counties, and Community Law Program in Pinellas counties. Uh, and we want, if you're faced with an eviction notice and you have you know, concerns and nowhere to go, please, please, please reach out to legal aid. 
when United Way has been looking at this information, the way we, we like to see it is we're, we want to address short-term, medium-term, and long-term issues of this. Because uh, the reality is, in theory, the best way to go about it to get support, if you are looking for support, is to reach out months in advance. Uh, but we know that if you get served an eviction notice, you don't have months here, uh, you have days. And so for individuals who are getting an eviction notice and has have days uh, to address this, reach out to legal aid um, as soon as possible. Honestly, even the moment you get that notice, if you reach out, they can do more than if you even reach out a day or two later by having that time and opportunity. Uh, so that addresses the crisis. You know, when we were looking at this issue, we also wanted to address the medium term and long term. Uh, and I know this wasn't the question. Do you mind if I get into this as well? That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So when we were looking at this work, we noticed that there was, you know, apartment rates have been going up. People are getting priced out of their homes. Um, and so we have not only an eviction crisis, which is immediate term, uh, a rent crisis, which is going up, which is, in, you know, sort of multiple months you know, medium term crisis, but then we have a housing crisis, which is long term. And so we had a conversation of, well, where do we focus our efforts? And unfortunately, through conversations, the answer is everywhere. Um, and so we were very much uh, gifted with a fantastic uh, opportunity uh, through uh, a gift known as the RISE program, where we've been able to dedicate $3 million to address the eviction and housing crisis. And I'll tell you, depending on who you are, $3 million is either a whole lot of money or it's not a lot of money at all, we've learned. Because um, for example, there is an emergency rental assistance program that's out there. And in our five counties, there's been $100 million that's able to get out. And so 3 million sounded like a lot to me until you put it up against 100. And so you know we had a choice to either make it a little money or a lot. And we decided to make it a lot by using it as a multiplier. And so we've actually funded legal aid to get you through crisis. Uh, but we also have housing navigators located throughout uh, about 12 to 14 nonprofits in our community. So if you are in a place where you don't have an eviction notice, but you are worried about your rent, we would strongly encourage you to reach out to one of these housing navigators to get you set up and helped. Uh, especially if you haven't received emergency rental assistance that's out there yet, uh, there are funds that can help you for 12 to 15 months of rent in some cases, uh, which is quite a bit of money in order to get you on your feet and get you moving. And so we do have these navigators that are throughout our counties to help you uh, get those services to make sure that you can get rental assistance. And the reason we have these navigators is there's an online application. You could do it yourself, but it's hard. It is a government application. Uh, and there is a lot of complications that, that just make it for the individual, the average individual fairly tiresome and tedium. Uh, but then there's the long-term crisis. Honestly, as much as we have to address the housing crisis of 2022, we have to be simultaneously addressing the housing crisis of 2025 uh, because it takes a good two or three years to build affordable housing, especially if you're looking to increase stock. And so again, we have to look at it from all those angles and figure out, well, what do we do? Our, Doug, our guest is Doug Griesenhauer, the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. We're talking about their new online dashboard that is giving you the state of the housing crisis. And we've talked about things so far like the eviction crisis, the rent cost crisis, crisis. and we'll go into all of all of that and more. And we'll also take your calls. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. You can also text 813-433-0885. And Doug, to kind of underline the, the amount of how unaffordable a lot of housing is out there, according to your organization, United Way Suncoast, a two-earner household with each person making $15 an hour cannot find affordable rental accommodations which means, as we talked about earlier, 30% or less of their income in our five-county Tampa Bay region. And all this is happening where the state minimum wage sits at $10 an hour. So essentially, the ten, what I'm reading here is, is, is it's the, the minimum wage is only a third, really, of what you need to, to be able to afford to live in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, how do we reconcile that? I mean, at some point, people have to be able to pay rent in order to live in a region and work in a region. Right. Yeah, no. And so that is a lot of the conversation we're having. And honestly, you know, what do we do about it? The first thing we do is we start changing the conversation instead of what is the minimum wage and the income to what does it actually cost to get by? I mean, let's look at real costs in our community, which we've done and figure out what is the cost of housing in not just the United States, but here in West Central Florida? What is the cost of childcare here in West Central Florida? And then from that, we can just basic math, we can figure out actually how much it costs to get by. Um, and don't get me wrong, I mean, a movement from $10 to $15 an hour for a minimum wage is fantastic, right? And that will help a lot of people um, with, with their incomes. But unfortunately, it's, it's not enough. And so being able to have conversations with our community about how do we 
build up the two aspects of an individual finance. And really, when you're talking about money, it's either make more money or spend less. That's the only two pieces of the seesaw you got. Um, and so when we're with United Way, we try to do both. And so we're working a lot with individuals to build up their incomes, hopefully beyond minimum wage, uh, in order to get to a family sustaining wage so they can increase their incomes. But then conversely, we want to make sure that they receive benefits that they are entitled to and they can reduce uh, costs that they have in their household. Uh, it may seem fairly tangential, but right now we're in the thick of tax season. Um, and so most people don't think of their taxes when they think of paying their rent. Um, but there is a free tax program that we have in our community going through April 18th, where United Way has a good two or 300 volunteers certified by the IRS to prepare your taxes. And that's especially important this year, because if you had children, there is an advanced child tax credit that was available to you July through December that if you didn't receive, you could get. I know it seems like a long time ago, but the economic impact payment back in March of $1,400, if you haven't claimed that yet, you can. And $1,400, that's a month rent right there. And so being able to connect the dots is something that we work with a lot of individuals to figure out, well, how do you balance that? Because um, you're exactly right. The minimum, the bare legal minimum that individuals can make uh, of their wages simply is not enough to get by in our communities. And Doug, uh, you mentioned these tax programs. And I, and I want to point out to people, if you're looking for links to any of these programs, if you're looking for links to the uh, United Way Suncoast dashboard, that's on WMNF.org. You can find links to all this information. But if people would rather hear it than, than search around a website for it, that sounds some, like something that a lot of people might want to take advantage of right now is a tax program where you are you can um, reach out to volunteers who are or to people who can help you to prepare your taxes. So where can people go for that? What's the best way to find out how to get help preparing your taxes? Yep. So the best way to go about that, we actually have a website that is www.uwsvita.org. So www.uwsvita, which itself is a whole acronym, UWS, United Way Suncoast, VITA, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. Uh, and so if you put that in, it'll redirect you to our tax website, um, where you actually, we have free online assistance uh, that can do remote tax prep for any household that makes $73,000 or less. You can file for free through our system and through our website. Uh, if you need a little bit more help than filing your taxes by yourself, we actually have an online help desk for individuals to receive those services. And then if you'd like someone to help you prepare your taxes, um, we do still have spaces available, though I will point out that time is running out. Uh, there are individuals that are there, uh, but we have just about, uh, what are we looking at, three weeks left in our tax season. Um, so you can call, we have a toll free number uh, for our appointment scheduler, and that is 833-897-8482 or 833-UWS-VITA. So again, that's 833-897-8482, and you can call and we can have one of our schedulers set you up with an appointment while they're still available, though they are going fast. And, and again, that's not just because of help with preparing taxes, which certainly is helpful, but it's also with knowing the, the intricacies of which credits that you're eligible for and making sure that money that was supposed to be directed to you doesn't go, fall through the cracks and that you make and it makes sure that you get that refund or that money. That is exactly right. And another thing that's actually really interesting to note um, that people might not be aware of is there was actually um, a law that was passed nationwide um, through an expansion of uh, the Affordable Care Act that actually, if you're on the Affordable Care Act through the marketplace, you can get some uh, advanced premium tax credits refunded to you fairly considerably. I was actually doing an individual's taxes uh, last weekend, and they got a surprise three or nine hundred dollars because of that, um, and they just simply weren't aware that there was a change, um, and so we were able to file their taxes and get them those benefits, and so. What we want to do is we want to make sure that everyone is receiving the benefits they are entitled to. And I will tell you, most people aren't aware uh, that they can get these thousands of dollars that, again, are, are there for them if they just file their taxes. Um, and the other thing we want to make sure people do is that, you know, if you can do it for free, that helps too, right? And so we want to make sure that individuals have free quality services that are available in their area. Our guest is Doug Griesenauer, the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. We're talking about their State of the Housing Crisis dashboard that's online. You can find a link to it on WMNF.org. It's 1025 in the morning. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We have someone on the line. So let's see what Scott in Safety Harbor has to say. Hi, Scott. What's on your mind? Good morning, gentlemen. 
Um, I just have a, a couple questions that maybe you can help me with. I have, I've set myself up. I'm retired. Um, set myself up to, to live as, as well as I need to. But with all these price increases and everything, I'm, I'm on a limited income retirement. And uh, I, is there something I can do or can you steer me in the right direction to maybe get some temporary help so prices get under control? All right, Scott, thanks for the question to talking about inflation and, and how people who have already saved what they thought was going to be enough. Now it's hitting inflation. It's hitting us all hard. So I appreciate that that call. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. And let's see what Doug has to say about that. Hey, Scott. So first, I'd like to say that, again, I don't think it makes you feel any better, but you are not alone. Um, when we were looking, especially at our retired population in our community, there's a lot of individuals that may not necessarily be in poverty, but they are struggling. Right. So our community has a social safety net. Uh, for individuals who are retired, it's called Social Security. And for the most part, it helps uh, individuals get out of poverty. But when we look at our studies and our information, we see that that is nowhere near enough to help people make ends meet. And you're exactly right what Scott mentioned. If you're on a fixed income, you know, fixed is fixed, right? And so the ability to, to make adjustments is difficult. Um, and so what I would suggest is one, if that you have a particular need um, for a particular resource, I would encourage you to reach out. Um, 211 is a fantastic uh, website or phone number that you can call to help receive services. You know, and one thing that I've had a lot of conversations with individuals, and it is your own choice of what's going on, um, but I would, you know, encourage anyone who is struggling and trying to figure out how to, how to make ends meet, really do look to your community for resources. Um, you know, we work very closely with Feeding Tampa Bay, with uh, RCS and uh, St. Pete Clinic, as well as others that have food pantries that are out there. Um, you know, this concept of food pantry in the past had has had a stigma to it. Um, I am seeing that a little less these days, um, but it still needs to be pushed that, I mean, if you need food, there are places to help you with those services, right? If you need help, especially with finding medicines, prescriptions tend to be a huge portion of older individuals' budgets, there are clinics and resources out there to get supports. Um, the information is sometimes buried. It's sometimes difficult. If you call 211, you can get service, but be prepared to wait on the line because lots of people are calling them to get services. Um, and so in a lot of these cases, it's really making sure that you can reach out to individuals and understand that these services are for the community to help fill that gap right? When there are food supports out there, it's because we know that individuals' budgets are not pacing with what we've been told was necessary in the past in order to get by. And so utilize those resources that are out there. Um, they are there for you so that you can, can get these benefits. Well, Scott, thank you so much for that call. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Good luck with that. And uh, thanks to Doug for all the help there so far. And so if you have a question like that, or if you're wor worried about your rent or your evictions or so forth, and you'd like to ask us questions here, give us a call at 813-239-9663. You can also email dj at wmnf.org. You can text 813-433-0885. Please let us know what community you are in. So again, my guest is Doug Griesenauer, Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast, and their State of the Housing Crisis dashboard is now online. You can find a link at WMNF.org. Uh, our, our last caller, Scott, there was talking about uh, how prices are going up. Let's specifically talk about rent. Uh, for, anecdotally, if you pay rent, you know that rent is going through the roof. But what, do, what kind of information and data do we have about how much it's increased in this area and how this area compares to the rest of the country? Sure. So rent has skyrocketed. Um, when we're looking at costs in our community, we know that really rent has been, and again, this is all on the dashboard. If you look at rent over time, uh, the most uh, far back we go right now is 2017. But if you look at 2017 uh, to about August or September of 2020, rent was surprisingly stable. And so again, for you know years and years and years, rent had been stable. And then from that point of 2020 up to 2021, uh, rent had skyrocketed. And in 2021, rent had increased about 24% across our community. And it was even more in some counties. I know there was a story that came out that mentioned that Pinellas County was the highest county in the nation with year-over-year -year rent increases, and Tampa and Hillsborough wasn't far behind. 
And so we've noticed that housing has increased everywhere. I mean, you talk to anybody in the, in the, in the nation, you see that housing's gone up, but it's gone up especially high in our communities. So let's look at the links that the United Way Suncoast Housing Dashboard has for renters on how they can get financial help if they've fallen behind on rent. You have links there for specific counties like Hillsborough, Manatee, Pinellas, and Sarasota, but you also have a, a link that has for renters in other counties and rental assistance for all of Florida. So what would you recommend for renters who are falling behind? So renters who are falling behind on rent, the first and foremost thing you do is make sure you've gotten that emergency rental assistance. Um, again, it does take time to process. Some people have even mentioned it takes four to six to eight weeks to process. Um, and that's two months rent that that's going through there. And so if you are looking at the future, and to your point, you mentioned that housing pulse survey um, and the individuals who are at the likelihood of leaving a home to an eviction in the next uh, two months is around that 40% right now. Those individuals, that 40% of all renters in Florida needs to make sure that they're utilizing those emergency rental assistance programs. Um, and those are per county. So each you go through your county, but they're federal dollars. Yep, it's federal dollars that have come out and it is in the counties as well as the state. So the county and the state actually has two separate pots of money. If you've gotten one, you can't get the other. But if one pot of money runs out, you're able to utilize the other one. Um, I will say that Hillsborough County has spent through most of their funds already. There's emergency rental assistance one, emergency rental assistance two. They spent all of that and actually appealed and applied for additional funding, which they received and spent. So if you're in Hillsborough County, you may not have access to the county funds, but you'll have access to the state funds because while well, the Hillsborough County has spent out most of theirs, uh, the state of Florida still has hundreds of thousands of dollars available through their process. Though I will note the Our Florida program is slow uh, and it is burdensome. And so again, that's where those navigators come in. And so for example, if you're in Hillsborough County, we have navigators at Metropolitan Ministries, uh, CDC of Tampa and UACDC, three nonprofits that can help you navigate your rent um, and navigate the fairly arduous Our Florida process. So again, if you're worried about evictions uh, and if you're worried about your rent, make sure you receive those benefits and those services while they last. What's the best way to get in touch with one of these navigators? Is it to walk into one of the locations you're, you're talking about or is it to make an appointment online? So it's to make an appointment online. I would encourage you to call them up. If you walk in, most likely they'll have you set up an appointment, turn around and walk back out and then come back later. And especially if transportation's an issue, you don't wanna take that out of your day. So I would encourage you to either go to their websites or call them up. Um, we're actually in the process of editing our uh, eviction dashboard to immediately below it, have these links to all of these sites. Um, had a bit of a technical glitch, so they're not up there right now, but we hope to get them up uh, within the week. And so go, but in the meantime, you know, you can go to these sites. Um, and if, again, you can't remember which nonprofits were just mentioned, you also can call 211 who can get those resources and supports to you. Our guest is Doug Griesenauer, the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. Their new online dashboard is called State of the Housing Crisis. You can find a link to that on WMNF.org. I'm Sean Canan, and this is Tuesday Cafe. You can call in at 813-239-9663. You can email dj at wmnf.org or text 813-433-0885. It's 1034 in the morning, and you're listening to 88.5 FM, WMNF Tampa. Doug, a, a recent story in the Sarasota Herald Tribune finds that as rents goes up, rents go up and ev evictions increase, Sarasota's seniors are struggling to find places to live. And we appreciate the call earlier from Scott and Safety Harbor to talk about how people who are retired are, are facing this issue. But I want to read some information from the Sarasota Herald Tribune. They cite the United Way Suncoast data that half of all Sarasota renters are now rent burdened. The article points out that for many retired residents on fixed incomes, often with fewer work options and more disabilities than their younger counterparts, even a slight rise in rent can spell disaster, let alone the 50% increase that has been recorded the past year in Sarasota County. The article quotes Susan Schoengold, the coordinator of Jewish Financial Assistance and Jewish Care Management at JFCS of the Suncoast, told the Sarasota Herald Tribune, the senior citizens are being completely priced out. So this is not just an issue in Hillsborough County. It's not just an issue in, in Pinellas, and it's not just an issue for people who are young and have large families. It's also for seniors, and it's also for all the parts of the Tampa Bay region. 
That's exactly right. And Sarasota specifically is an area that we've been focusing on because I mentioned earlier that rents had increased starting in you know mid 2021 and they leveled off uh, near the end of the near the end of the year. That's true for most counties except Sarasota. Um, data that we have, which is up to last month of February 2022, showed that Sarasota rents continue to raise and to continue to increase, in which the average rent for a Sarasota County apartment is $2,249 a month. Um, and so Sarasota, you know, JFCS was exactly right, in which Sarasota is continuing to struggle with this. And, you know, just to put that in context of what's going on, um, if you are at the federal poverty line, which again, we know is not necessarily a good judge of whether or not you're okay or not, but, but to give this some context, if you are at the federal poverty line in Sarasota County, Florida, and you spend every single dollar you make for an entire year on rent, you don't eat food, you don't pay gas, you don't have medicine, literally every dollar goes into it, you will still be 5% short of paying for your rent for that year. So again, when we're talking about costs, that tells us two things. One, costs in an apartment in Sarasota County are high and continue to rise. And two, federal poverty line just isn't a measure of success of what's going on. But what is interesting of note is that Sarasota County does still have rental assistance available. And so whereas Hillsborough County, I mentioned, had spent down their two baskets and then applied for more and then spent that down, Sarasota County still has funds available in their first allocation in order to spend. And so I would strongly encourage anyone in Sarasota and Manatee County specifically to make sure they apply for their county's rental assistance because there still are millions available at those counties. And again, we do have navigators who are in those areas who are willing to help individuals out, specifically at uh, Catholic Charities, Women's Resource Center, and All Faiths Food Bank, as well as our friends at Gulf Coast Legal Services. Our guest is Doug Griesenauer, a Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. We're talking about their new online dashboard called State of the Housing Crisis. You can find a link at WMNF.org. We got an email here that's, I'm going to ask you to fact check this, this meme that this that DeMarco is sending. And in, obviously there's a lot of numbers in here, so maybe you can fact check it for whether it sounds plausible rather than knowing the exact to the dollar amounts. But uh, the, this meme says the average rent in the U.S. at the end of 2018 was $1,400 a month. For rent to be approximately one quarter of income as recommended, it re would require an income of $5,700 a month. At 40 hours per week, that's $35 an hour, and the federal minimum wage is currently $7.25 an hour, much less for tipped employees. So uh, a lot of numbers there. Uh, obviously, you haven't memorized for the whole country the exact numbers, but does that sound somewhat plausible? It, it, it very much does. And so honestly, you know, we can, we can do some napkin math ourselves live on the air to, to figure out what's going on right now. So if you take Hillsborough County's rent, uh, of February 2022, that was 1793, right? So $1,793. You got 12 months in a year. Um, so that means you're spending 21 grand on rent alone, $21,516 on rent alone. In order for you to make sure that 30% of your income is that amount, uh, you need to be making about $71,000. Uh, and so you need to make, in order for you to be okay, I'm not talking about living large, in order to be okay in Hillsborough County, Florida for rent, which is average rent, you need to be making $71,720. And so that's just napkin math uh, from what from the data that we have available to us, but that meme does not surprise me um, because that is about you know how much it costs. It, it costs more uh, than minimum wages to get by for sure. And let's talk now about how students are impacted by all of this. And I mean, you know, uh, school age children and, and their families. ABC Action News is reporting that education leaders in the Tampa Bay area say more families are facing homelessness as the COVID-19 pandemic and the rising cost of living and inflation push many people to move in with their relatives, stay in hotels or live out of their cars. The Pinellas County School District homeless liaison said calls from families facing homelessness have gone up 3,000% in the last year. Pinellas students identified as living in hotels and motels also more than doubled in the last year from 7% to 16% of students. But as spring and summer approach, even hotels are getting too expensive. And uh, the Direction for Living's April Lot says shelters are constantly full, especially for those, those that have family beds 
and they're running out of funds to help. So uh, we've talked about seniors. What, what about families and students? So family and students are not exempt from this. Um, and especially as the case is most families that have you know a child or children, uh, you also can't necessarily live with just a studio. And so you know, you're looking at one bedroom, two bedroom apartments that are even more expensive. Um, for these individuals to get by. And what we do see is that a lot of those families with kids are being priced out too. Um, what's interesting to note and, and fairly you know, depressing, unfortunately, this whole conversation has been a bit depressing, but, but what's even more unfortunate is that, that this impacts not only an individual and a family's income, but student mobility as well, right? So you have kids who have lived with their neighbors, with their friends in their school, and a lot of people are having to move, you know, in a lot of cases outside of their school and a lot of cases outside of their county into a different school district um, and you're uprooting those those social networks and so what's interesting to note that we don't talk a lot about with this impact is the real mental health impact on what's going on right you mentioned that housing pulse survey that showed the likelihood of leaving to a home due to an eviction in the next two months um, as of march of 2022 so this month was at about 44 percent and we know that 44 percent of every single renter in florida is not going to be evicted but 44% are worried about it. And so if you think right now, right, April is, is in the next couple of days. And so if you think by the beginning of June, I don't know where I'm gonna be living, that has to have an impact on your life, right? To have in the back of your mind every day, I'm trying to do what's best for my family, do what's best is moving forward, but I don't know if I'm gonna be living where I'm living come June, that has severe mental health impacts. And if you know that I might have to uproot my kid from his friends and her friends, from their you know, social schools and their social connections, that has severe impacts. And so again, when we talk about this ripple effect that comes from housing, it without exaggeration really does impact every aspect of an individual's life. Our guest is Doug Griesenauer, the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. They have a new online dashboard called State of the Housing Crisis. It's at WMNF.org. You can find a link there. And it has all sorts of information like data about how much uh, things are going up, how much prices are going up and how much people need help. But there's also resources there where you can click on links to get resources where you can find help. So I hope you use that, that resource on our website, WMNF.org. I want to remind people that you're listening to WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota, Lakeland, and beyond on 88.5 FM and on the WMNF app. You might also be listening on WMNF.org. And we'd like to take your phone calls as well. So if, if you have any questions for Doug, or if you want to tell us about your situation, give us a call at 813-239-9663. You can text us at 813-433-0885. It'll be helpful if you tell us the area where you are and your name. And you can also email us at dj at WMNF.org. So, uh, Doug, on Friday, the Associated Press and NORC released a poll of Americans about inflation. They were asked, how concerned are you about the impact of higher than usual prices of different items on your whole household? And it surprised me a little bit when I saw that housing was only fourth on their list of worries that came after gas, groceries, and other goods and services. But that does, I don't want to downplay this because still 40% of respondents said they were extremely or very concerned about housing prices. 24% said somewhat concerned, 35% said not very concerned or not concerned at all. So uh, based on that conversation, keep in mind, this is a national poll. Uh, any, any insight you could add to that? Yeah, so, you know, at first blush, honestly, and unfortunately, that doesn't surprise me too much, only because we've noticed that there is uh, a discrepancy of individuals who are worried about rent and those who aren't, um, you know, especially as we're looking at people coming out of the pandemic, right? And a lot of people have talked about how, you know, hopefully, please knock on everything wooden, that right now we're in a dip uh, from the virus itself. But the economic impacts of the pandemic are continuing to grow and are continuing to be widespread. And a lot of people have noticed that there's what's a bit of a K-shaped recovery uh, when it comes to the pandemic. And K-shaped recovery essentially means kind of like the letter K, where everything went up and then some people recovered really well and other people didn't, making the shape of a letter K. And what we notice is that there are you know, upper middle and, and higher income individuals and, and some that are, you know, middle income individuals that are okay. And some people who actually made it out of the pandemic, fine. Um, and so those individuals that if you have a 30 year fixed mortgage, you aren't worried about what's going on. You might know, notice gas. Um, 
right? And so you might notice that it costs a dollar more to get to and from where you're going because gas is in everyday life and it's directly in front of you. Um, and so I think there is, you know, even more reason to talk about these issues is that some people don't notice them, right? There's a lot of individuals in our community who aren't aware that there is an affordable housing crisis, that aren't aware that there is an apartment rate rent increase crisis um, because they themselves are okay. And again, no blame to that, right? It's great. <laughs> it's fantastic that there are people who aren't struggling. Like, I don't mean to, to guilt or to shame or anything like that, but simply the fact that there isn't an awareness there is actually leading to a lot of difficulties as we're doing our work. Um, what's fascinating is actually there is a lot of American Rescue Plan dollars that our counties have all received um, in order to address issues from the pandemic, in order to address the issues that are coming up. And what we've noticed is that a lot of those um, funds are being directed toward things like wastewater treatment, things like transportation issues. Don't get me wrong, we should be focused on those things and that's good. But a lot of conversation has not been around housing. And I'll give you an example is that, you know, the city of St. Petersburg in Pinellas County has dedicated some of the highest amounts of their rescue plan dollars toward housing. Um, but at least the last time I checked, the county of Pinellas hasn't directed any of their funds. Right, and they have directed their funds toward things like parks and and developing and improving wastewater and things that I will tell you are worthwhile. Right, so it's not a bad uh, decision, but without an awareness of the real impact of housing, I think we are missing out on a once in a lifetime opportunity with these funds, and we're not able to access them simply because we don't have a community wide awareness that this is an issue. My guest is Doug Griesenauer, the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. They have a new online dashboard called State of the Housing Crisis. It has data, but it also has links to resources that will help you. And we have a link to that on our website right now, WMNF.org. And uh, Doug, we're going to go back to St. Petersburg in just a second. But at first, I want to take a call that just came in. Uh, we have a call here from Gulchin in Tampa. Hi, Gulchin. What would you like to say? Uh, yeah, hello. Um, I have a question. My husband has been diagnosed uh, with Parkinson, and and he's almost 60 years old. But uh, somehow, uh, would he be able to get a social security? He's been only working uh, maybe 20-some, nine years total, maybe a little bit more. And right now he's still working and he's only earning seven to eight thousand dollars a year, maybe a little bit more. Would he be able to qualify for a social security benefit or any kind of housing uh, monetary benefit? Well, Gulchin, thanks so much. Let me ask my my guest if he knows much about the social security system or or what resources you would recommend that, that to point them to toward. Yes. So I don't want to speak out of turn because I am not as aware of social security benefits and social security disability benefits as uh, someone who is uh, at social security administration. So I would encourage them to reach out to social security to ask those questions and get that information. But in regards to what benefits are available, you know, I would say, especially if you mentioned that, you know, he's only being able to make the seven or eight thousand dollars and he's trying to figure out to get on social security. You know, it sounds like he could be eligible for that rental assistance I was just talking about before. And so I would strongly encourage you to reach out to Social Security Administration and figure out the answer to that question. Unfortunately, I can't help you there. But in the meantime, again, uh, again, you're in Tampa. And so the Hillsborough funds are a little less, but you could reach out to our Florida for the state of Florida's housing support funds. Um, and again, even if it's not an immediate crisis right now, I would encourage you um, to begin that process and application because that could give you some relief there. And maybe 211 might be a resource for other, other things as well? Of course, yes. Always call 211 anytime you have a question. Definitely. Thank you so much. This is a wonderful show. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much for calling in and good luck with all of that. Thanks so much. And I just want to remind people that we're speaking with Doug Griesenauer, Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. They have a new online dashboard called State of the Housing Crisis. You can find a link at WMNF.org. And we are uh, also encouraging you to call in if you have any questions, 813-239-9663. You can email dj at wmnf.org, or you can text 813-433-0885. Please sign your name and tell us where you're texting from as well. 
And Doug, I want to uh, ask you about this. So Fox, I saw on Fox 13 today that they said that in St. Petersburg, rent is up by more than 25 percent. City officials say more developers are stepping up to build housing with reduced rents for the city's workforce. But renters say long term solutions are not working for the immediate needs of residents. So this is something we touched on a little bit earlier about, you know, we have to address really the long term crisis, and that is making sure that there's enough affordable housing in the city or in the county or in the region. Um, but people still do need immediate relief. How would you respond? I would respond, you know, to what we were talking about earlier is that this is a three part issue of a crisis that's immediate, uh, a, me a short term, medium term and long term crisis. And I think, you know, the unfortunate reality is you have to be able to have all three of them in your sites simultaneously. Um, and so, you know, to that point, I would say both sides are correct. Uh, you do need to make sure you're building affordable housing and you need to make sure that you have rental aid and assistance that's immediately right in front of you. Um, I will tell you, I've had conversations with uh, some commissioners in the city of St. Pete that have had conversations about ways to address um, direct rental needs and the direct increase of rents that are happening. And so I know that those conversations are taking place, but it really does need to be a both and a process, right? And I'll tell you, I've had conversations with the business community that are saying that, you know, it's not just, uh, again, an affordable housing with a capital A, right? The definition of affordable housing, it's not just that, but it's a lowercase a of just housing that is affordable in our communities. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of individuals that are, um, that are struggling even recruiting people here because if you're being recruited here in the past it was you know you're coming from new york you can get a nice sizable place a nice good size apartment here for a good price um we can't say that anymore so it's actually getting harder to attract talent um and again i we had a conversation with um one of our local healthcare providers that mentioned that there was you know a nurse making seventy thousand dollars a year and still was struggling and so again this isn't just for you know, one subset of the population. And it's also not just in one subset of time. It really, and it's hard to, to try to keep all of that in front of our faces at the same time. I don't mean to, to dismiss that, but it's necessary. You have to be looking at all sides as we're addressing both the 2022 crisis and the 2025 crisis. Doug Griesenauer is Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. They have a new online dashboard called State of the Housing Crisis. It's 10.53 in the morning. You're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We're taking your calls. If you have any questions for Doug about uh, their, their assistance or where you can find more information or where you can find help. And we have a call coming in right now from Gary. Hi, Gary. What's on your mind? What would you like to ask? Uh, good morning, Sean. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, something that I wanted to point out um, as we look at Pinellas County as well as Hillsborough County when it comes to affordable housing, one of the main factors across the country as cities, counties, and municipalities tackle this very issue, we have uh, people like Goldman Sachs and Amazon that are contributing money to places like Arlington, Virginia, and Atlanta, Georgia for affordable housing at the tune of $100 million. Now, how would that change the landscape if somebody in Pinellas County were to get a, a contribution like that and let's say allocate 13,000 uh, places for affordable housing? And how would that, you know, how would that be looked at uh, as contributing to that uh, as the mayors of both St. Pete and Tampa tackle this very issue? All right, Gary, thanks for that call. And maybe I'll add to that when I asked Doug uh, how he would respond. You know, I think that Gosh, I don't want to sound too negative, but you know, company gigantic companies don't necessarily do things just out of the the goodness of their hearts. Sometimes they do it because they feel somewhat responsible for the problem. And so maybe that's so. If you hear about communities where Amazon is creating, helping to create affordable housing, I think it's in part because their high tech, higher income, perhaps in some cases, workforce now has priced everyone else out of the affordable housing market. Um, I don't mean to get too far afield, but let's let's what would you say about the the outside groups that come in and either contribute to the housing issue or help to alleviate it? Yeah, and so uh, I hate to be a broken record here, but this is such a large enough issue that it has to be an everyone all hands on deck situation. Um, you know, this affordable housing crisis that we're looking at is one that simply the market cannot solve on its own. 
Um, and so because of that, we need support from both business and uh, government entities in order to come in and offer support, right? Any type of, of support and combination from both of those fields uh, would work wonders in building supports and building structure. Um, and Sean, to your point, you know, you can actually make a fairly fiscal argument for the need to build up affordable housing for our workforce development here, right? If you are having issues recruiting individuals and talents and you can make sure that you have right next to your company, you know, a nice, sizable, reasonable apartment complex uh, that you can allocate some support and staff for housing, you know that that's going to recruit talent and you're going to be able to build that up. So again, you you don't have to do it out of the kindness of your heart. You can do it from whatever, you know, impetus you have, but there is a financial reason to invest in housing in our community. And we do know that good work is being done by our cities and counties in order to build up housing. Um, but it is, again, orders of magnitude less than what is necessary in order to build us to truly equitable, affordable housing. And so to get that, we really do need support from everyone who's willing to support. All right, let's see if we can squeeze in a couple of more calls before the end of the show. Clay is in Land of, Lake, Clay, Land of Lakes. Clay, can you make your question quick? Uh, yeah, actually, it's observation. You know, we're, uh, first, I want to thank uh, United Way and all their partners for all the hard work they've done trying to alleviate the, the problems that are coming from this. But that's the thing I wanted to talk about. We're not looking at what the heart of the problem is. This is because housing is being commodified. There is no more free market. And that there are businesses or there are uh, companies that are buying up housing and apartment complexes to increase the rent. I mean, they, they have a, a control. There is no free market and there is no free market, especially in housing, that's making it, – it's what's made this problem happen is the greed of people and then buying up all these homes. Because there's lots of empty homes out there. Right now, down the street from me, they built 75 uh, single-family units, and none of them – single family uh, uh, home. None of them are for sale. They're all for rent. That's all they're for. Brand new. Brand new subdivision called Wood Lakes Preserve. Why are they doing that? They're not trying to sell houses. And most people can't afford to get into a house anymore either because of uh, the financial crisis, because of the amount of money they make, because they can't qualify. So you have these brokers out there that are buying up all these homes and, and raising the rent on them. Clay, I'm going to move on because I, I appreciate that comment. That certainly it's a fact that's contributing to the housing crisis is all these uh, investor homes that are coming up and, and with the specific reason of increasing rents and making a killing from the housing market. So appreciate that point. But let's move on because we have a call here from uh, Deanna in Largo. And I want to see what Deanna says. Deanna, we really only have a few seconds left. What, what's your question? Okay. Well, my it's more of a statement is, I moved here in 71, I've had children and my children have had children. And the future of my grandchildren being able to afford to live in Pinellas County is nil. And I would like to ask why the building don't they convert it to affordable housing? There, there's so many empty offices everywhere and empty um, <clears throat> uh, stores that could be easily converted to affordable housing but doing that, and, and I don't I don't understand. There's big things and people on the street because they it, it, or near the street because they can't pay their rent. Good question, Deanna. Any any thoughts as we wrap up here uh, on those questions? Yeah, just real quick, so I know we have a few seconds. I would say you know that's a really interesting point, especially as as the pandemic has caused more individuals to work from home. We do have increased uh, commercial space and a need for residential. And I think a lot of that issue is just talking to your local representatives and trying to get some zoning changes to, to get that done. Yeah, so infill of uh, of housing into places where commercial empty sits in, empty and vacant sounds like a great example. Any, well, I'm tongue tied, but it sounds like a great way to maybe increase the amount of stock there is for affordable housing. Well, I wanna thank you so much for joining us on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe today, Doug. Great, great to be here. I'm so glad you could join us. Doug Griesenauer is the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability for United Way Suncoast. They have a new online dashboard. It's called State of the Housing Crisis. And if you go to WMNF.org, you can find a link to that. And we'll post this full interview on our website, the audio for sure. And I want to thank to Jan Simpson for answering phones for us today. You've been listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. This show is every Tuesday morning at 10. 
If you like the programming on 88.5 FM, please consider donating at WMNF.org. In this time slot tomorrow, Shelly will host Midpoint. And coming up next, we have Wavemakers hosted by Janet and Tom Sherberger. That's coming up after NPR headlines. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota, and Lakeland. Thanks so much for listening and for supporting community radio.